One is shot on a smartphone and the other one is on $4,000 camera and lens combination. Can you guess which one is which? Raw video on the smartphone. Is it real? It is, but I have the good and the bad news. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you are watching No Limits On channel. The good news is that it has the best quality video I've ever seen on a smartphone. And trust me, I've tested dozens of those and these results from DNG RAWs are the most impressive. And we'll compare it to full-frame video based Sony A7S III. The bad news. The workflow is terrible, so let me show you all the benefits and drawbacks and nuances. So, to unlock DNG RAW video on your Android smartphone, it's only available for Android as for now you need to install a free app which is called Motion Cam or MCAM. And make sure that your phone is fully supported. Here is the full list. I've tested the phone of my colleague Michael and it's OnePlus 7 Pro. It's not the best smartphone out there, but it's still fully supported and you may expect a little better results from newer models. But don't be fooled guys, the laws of physics are still working, I'm talking about tiny sensors and not that good optics, so the improvements will be negligible. So let's have a look at the footage shot with the main camera module since it has the biggest sensor and the best optics and compare it to Sony a7S III with a quite boring lens 24-70 f4. Without pixel peeping or when watching on a smaller screen, I'm very impressed with the results of 4K RAW video on OnePlus 7 Pro and it's pretty much comparable to S-Log3 10-bit 4K footage of Sony a7S III. But when you watch it full screen on a bigger monitor or zoom in 4 times like I did here so you can see the differences better, we start to see that the picture is much softer and it's noisier even at ISO 100 on OnePlus. Considering the fact that I applied noise reduction in Lightroom and color corrected the footage before this comparison. It's especially noticeable in the shadows and the corners of the shot and if you want to pull some darker shadows we start to see tons of colorful noise. It can be corrected of course but the picture gets blurrier and sharpening it back up gives us the picture quality close to what we see in the stock camera app of almost any smartphone out there because it's basically doing the same thing with powerful smartphone processor, reducing the noise and adding sharpness, thus giving us kind of a painting look. If we have a look at wide-angle camera, we see a huge distortion, which of course can be easily corrected in post, but also we see a much softer and noisier picture because of the darker aperture. So if you want to get the best results from your smartphone camera, use the main camera module. The telephoto camera looks better and I'm quite surprised by its performance, but once again, it has darker aperture, so be careful with it and I suggest shooting with it only in good lighting conditions. The DNG files have not a ton of room in post to play with, but it's much better than trying to grade a ready video file from any smartphone. To conclude about the image quality. The graded RAW video with motion cam app is a very powerful tool and the image quality is a lot better than what you get with the stock camera app. But here comes the bad news. The workflow. In total, for this test, I've recorded 6 minutes and 15 seconds of 4K 30fps video, which took 11,300 DNG photos and a total of 80 gigabytes of storage. After converting all of those into JPEGs via Lightroom, it became 130 gigabytes for 6 minutes of video. It's not obligatory to convert DNG to JPEG, you can work with DNGs straight in Final Cut, just dragging those to the timeline and setting the length of each photo to one frame, or better in DaVinci Resolve, which considers DNGs as a sequence immediately. But I wanted to see the full potential of DNGs and edited those in Lightroom first. By the way, I edit on MacBook Pro 16-inch base model with M1 Pro chip, which is $2500 computer and it was screaming, having not enough RAM to render this short project and for the first time ever I've heard the fans spinning. Also, the export crashed around 10 times and overall workflow was extremely tough and slow. It took me around 10 hours to record the raw videos, convert those into DNGs on the smartphone itself. By the way, the battery on the phone went down to 10% after 100% after shooting and converting to DNGs 6 minutes of footage. And you can also use a special app for macOS to convert to DNGs on your computer, I guess it'll reduce the conversion time a bit. And by the way, if you're curious, converting 10 seconds of video in 30fps on the smartphone itself took 2.5 minutes. 
also there is a way to connect your Android smartphone to an external SSD drive which was pre-formatted to XFAT format which will also reduce the time for post-production but I didn't try this option. If your storage is low or the processor isn't powerful enough, you can start to see some lower frame rates and inconsistencies. And overall the options for frame rates are quite weird. But the app itself and the interface is very intuitive and simple. You can enable an easy crop to Ultra HD 4K and overall I have no complaints about the interface. So guys, let's conclude. It is not worth the hassle in my opinion. It was the toughest video workflow I've ever had and if you want to record more than 10 minutes of raw video footage, you'll need a ton of storage, a very powerful computer and nerves made of steel to get better results than with a stock camera app. But I really don't want to go through this hell once again. Plus we have some drop frames here and there, stabilization is very inconsistent and you'd better turn it off completely and stabilize everything in post. Images are still very noisy and soft, poor optics and small sensors are the reasons for that. You can definitely play around with it yourself since it's completely free, but be ready for some painful stuff in post. I'm glad that we are moving forward in terms of mobile cinematography and raw video is a nice option for enthusiasts. And when I was finishing my review of this program, I got this news about new firmware and will have an option of exporting to MP4 and a basic editor with shadows, contrast, white point, black point, saturation, uh, kind of tweaks and features and also temperature and tint sliders, as well as bitrate options and different resolution crops and pixel formats up to 444, which is very nice. So basically we'll be having an MP4 file pre-rendered and this file won't contain any noise reduction or distortion correction or stabilization as far as I understand, but it's a better way to capture video than the stock camera app, in my opinion. So if you want to, you can have not as much hassle as I told you before and just export to MP4s, but there will be not that uh, kind of rawish and you won't have as many options and as many possibilities to tweak the picture. I hope you did enjoy this video guys and if you did, smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say my videos and hit the notifications bell. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.